Chapter 91 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 90 You have to stay alive. Young Master has yet to consummate his marriage author. Purple Peony Machine Translation He Lan Jin turned around and saw Chiao Hanya walking forward. He climbed onto the wall in an upright manner. She was shocked and said, Chiao Hanya, are you crazy? There are really a hundred vicious dogs inside that can bite people. Get down here. She was just joking. She didn't expect him to be serious. He Lan Jin walked up and saw his agile figure jumping down. She immediately heard the dogs barking fiercely. Chiao Hanya, you will be bitten to death. Get back here. He Lan Jin was anxious. She took off his coat and threw it to the side. She turned around and climbed onto the wall. She saw that the courtyard was pitch black. The dogs all pounced over, and Xiao Hanya's figure disappeared. He Lan Jin had never thought that a joke of hers would be treated seriously by him. She did not feel good in her heart. She climbed up the wall and was about to jump down to look for him. Unexpectedly, her foot was grabbed by someone. He Lan Jin turned her head and looked over. She did not know when, but a black figure had appeared. It stood there like a wooden puppet, holding her foot and preventing her from going down. Who are you? Let go of me. He Lan Jin struggled as he grabbed her ankle tightly. Nan Feng. Nan Feng's voice was very deep and hoarse, as if his throat had been injured before. It sounded rather shocking in the middle of the night, but if one listened carefully, they would find it very sexy. He Lan Jin listened as Meng kicked at his body and said, I don't care who you are, Bei Feng or Nan Feng. Let go of my leg. You can't let go, Nan Feng said expressionlessly. He did not dare to raise his head to look at her. He wore a hat, so she could not see his appearance. She only knew that he was very tall and sturdy. She blurted out, Why? You have to live. Young Master has yet to consummate his marriage. Young Master is an upright and upright person. You absolutely cannot rape a corpse. Nan Feng was still thinking about Chiao Hanya's first night. Up until now, he had not told anyone about it. The eighteen generations of the Chiao family's ancestors should be in a hurry to revive and persuade him. He Lan Jin was stunned by his words. She could not believe that this person had such a big brain. Hey, do you want to change jobs? I can offer a high price. He Lan Jin was a little excited. She needed someone with a big brain to develop software. Nan Fong did not answer. She heard the dog barking fiercely inside. She could vaguely smell the smell of blood. She saw that something seemed to have been bitten off and torn apart by the dog. She shouted in disbelief, Chiao Hanya, don't. What if Chiao Hanya was accidentally bitten to death by the dog although she believed him, she did not believe the dog. She kicked Nan Feng fiercely and took the opportunity to jump into the courtyard. Regardless of whether Chiao Hanya was alive or dead, she was going to give it her all. Bed o dem, young madam. Seeing this, Nan Feng climbed up and wanted to grab her. However, when he saw a figure flash over, he silently jumped and disappeared. When he Lan Jin jumped down, before her feet even touched the ground, an arm reached out and hugged her slender waist. The man pushed her to the side and carried her to the top of the wall. He flipped over and landed steadily. Ah Jean, your luck with the peach blossom. Xiao Hanya's magnetic voice sounded above her head. He held the blossoming peach blossom in his hand and handed it to her. This blossoming peach blossom entered her eyes, as if it had replaced the entire winter, filling her eyes with the color of spring. Did you know that the evil dogs inside can bite people? He Lanjin's nose was a little sore, and her throat felt like it was stuck. Chiao Hanya handed the peach blossom to her hand, but his fingertips were pinching another peach blossom. He pinned it between her hair and said, Compared to you, they are insignificant. You. He Lanjin was so angry at him that she turned around and walked away. 
He reached out and hugged her tightly, refusing to let go. She was hugged by him and did not reject him. She quietly listened to his heartbeat, and her small hands gently tugged at the corner of his shirt. She was a little nervous. Ah Jean. Yes, she answered. Chapter 92 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 91 I can still bring you to the grave of your marriage author. Purple Peony Machine Translation Xiao Hanya hugged her tightly, their bodies pressed together. He lowered his head and kissed her hair. It was not hard to hear the joy in his voice. He said in a low voice, I'm very happy to meet you. This is a once in lifetime opportunity. I'll never leave you. He Longin tugged at the corner of his shirt and suddenly had an idea. She looked at the sky. At this moment, the sky was dark. Everyone was immersed in their dreams. She grabbed his hand and said, let's go somewhere. Nan Fong was in the dark, with a toothpick in his mouth. He silently wanted to catch up, but Xiao Hanya turned his head and gave him a glance. He retreated and didn't dare to watch the show. He could only silently take out his phone. What did you call me just now? He Lan Jin asked as she led him around a few streets. Mrs. Chiao, Chiao Han Ye said in a low voice. He watched her reach out and point at the closed door of the Civil Affairs Bureau. She turned around with a handsome face and stood there valiantly she said, if I count to ten, you can let them open the door. Not only are you lucky in love, I can also take you to the tomb of marriage. Oh. What Ah Jin means is, as long as you open the door, you will marry me. Xiao Hanya asked meaningfully. He Lan Jin swung her ponytail, turned around, and sat down on the steps. She put her little hands on her knees and said, yes. Dot, just as she finished speaking. He Lan Jin vaguely heard the sound of the door opening. She was startled, and a trace of surprise flashed across her almond dot shaped eyes. She saw someone wearing a bright red dress running out she stood there and said, I'm the director of the Civil Affairs Bureau. I just had a dream that someone was coming to apply for a certificate, so I came to take a look. I didn't expect the two of you to have a tacit understanding with me. Serving the people is my mission. The two of you, come with me. He Lan Jin was stunned, as if this was premeditated. She saw Chiao Hanya come forward, stretched out his hand in front of her, and said, Mrs. Chiao, it's not too late to go back on your words now. She was silent, staring at Chiao Hanya for a long time. It was just a joke. After all, it was the middle of the night. Not to mention the Civil Affairs Bureau, even the public restrooms were not open, okay how could she have expected the director to come personally? What, Mrs. Chiao doesn't dare to? Xiao Hanya smiled and looked at her. He Lan Jin was dumbfounded. She stared at him with her unfathomable black eyes, as if everything was under control. Since Ah Jin is afraid and doesn't dare, then forget it, Xiao Hanya said in a deep voice. Just as she was about to leave, she heard his words and turned to walk inside. She said to the bureau chief, I didn't bring my ID card and household register. Let's do it another day. There's no need for ID, the bureau chief said quickly. He asked her to come over and take a photo, but he kept saying, don't worry, I'll definitely photoshop it and stamp it. She was forced into a corner, and she was a female soldier who valued her promises. She had no choice but to force herself to go in. Unexpectedly, after the photo was taken. Dot. He Lan Jin was stunned. She looked at the bureau chief clumsily photoshopped the photo and photoshopped her face so much that it could be turned into a gun barrel. She held her chin and looked at Xiao Hanya. There's no need to photoshop. My wife is naturally beautiful, Xiao Hanya said. When the bureau chief heard this, he immediately picked up a large stamp and covered it with it, shaking the table until it almost cracked. He excitedly took the certificate and respectfully handed it over, saying, the two of you have a child early. He Lan Jin sat there in silence, got up and walked out. 
she went to the teller machine to take out a stack of money and said to him, you go and do something. You'll go back later. As she said that, she hailed a taxi and left. Xiao Hanya watched her leave and drove after her. When he saw her come to the Lu residence, he rang the doorbell and found Lu Zifan. Ah Jean. You're here. Lu Zifan was in his pajamas, watching her deliver herself to his door in the middle of the night. Thinking of what happened a few days ago, he thought about how she would coax her to bed. By then, other things would naturally be saved. Chapter 93 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 92 Breaking up with Lu Zifan Author Purple Peony Machine Translation He Lan Jin stood there and looked at his happy expression. She reached out and took out the money that she had just taken out. Take it, He Lan Jin said and stuffed the money into his hand. Thinking about how she had fallen into Chao Hanya's trap, it was not a good thing to drag Lu Zifan along. After all, she was a woman of principles. She could not do something that involved two people. Besides, after taking care of Lu Zifan, she would go back and teach Xiao Hanya a lesson. He was still young for daring to play tricks in front of her. Lu Zifan looked at the money in his hand and asked in confusion, Why are you giving me money in the middle of the night? Ah Jean, what triggered you? Lu Zifan, listen carefully. He Lan Jin stood there and adjusted her coat. She said to him, whether it's a marriage alliance or some other reason, you and I are not suitable. What do you mean? Lu Zifan had a bad feeling. He Lan Jin did not intend to beat around the bush with him. She said to him, I'm not interested in you. Now, the engagement is officially cancelled. This is the breakup fee. He Lan Jin, are you kidding me? The engagement is something that you can just cancel whenever you want. Is it because I didn't sleep with you that you can't stand the loneliness anymore? Fine, I can satisfy you when you go in. Lu Zifan was extremely angry. Things had not been going well recently, causing the Lu family to go through a disastrous decline. He knew that someone was playing tricks behind the scenes. As long as he caught that person, everything would be solved easily. However, he did not expect that Hilan Jin would actually break up with him previously, he had suspected that something was wrong with her. Pa! Hilan Jin was insulted by him. She slapped him without hesitation, causing Lu Zifan to take a few steps back. She stepped forward and grabbed his collar, almost lifting him up. She said sternly, I've tolerated you for a long time. Do you think I'm stupid about the matter between you and Hiroashue? I'm breaking up with you now because I've given you face. Don't be so shameless. I don't have the patience to tangle with you. You'd better not look for me again, or else. I'll castrate you. He Lan Jin said, fiercely shaking him off. He Lan Jin, is the Lu family's accident related to you? Lu Zifan asked coldly. He Lan Jin stopped and looked at him coldly. It's not related. If you dare to break up, aren't you afraid that I'll make the He family disappear from Jiangqing tomorrow? Lu Zifan threatened. Then I'll wait and see, He Lan Jin said. He wanted to know the He family's secret. How could he make a move before he got it she knew this? Thinking of this, she took out her phone and logged into Weibo to send a message, the Lu family is unreachable, so from now on, the ends of the earth are just passers.by. He Lan Jin's break up Weibo alone in the middle of the night had woken up a lot of people. Perhaps Lu Zifan and Hiroashue's passion had recently shocked the entire Jiangqing, so her Weibo had attracted attention. Poor Miss He. We can't tolerate being cuckolded. Her Weibo immediately attracted many fans, who were all attacking Lu Zifan. For a moment, rumors started to spread around the Lu Corporation. After He Lan Jin finished her Weibo post, she strode away. At the corner, she saw a black BMW driving over and stopping beside her. The car window rolled down. Xiao Hanya got out of the car, walked around her, and opened the car door. Get in the car. Hee hee, are you trying to stop me? He Lan Jin sneered, 
but she still got in the car boldly. After all, she was living in Jing Garden now, and it was on the same road as him. Unexpectedly, Chao Hanya said, I don't dare. You have long legs and good skills. I'm no match for you. Dot, he Lanjin suddenly laughed. Why did she feel a sense of happiness from the bottom of her heart every time she was with Chao Hanya? This feeling was something she had never enjoyed before, except for what her uncle's family could give her. What's this? He Lanjin had just gotten into the car when he handed her a document. She casually flipped through it. Bed Odem when she realized that it was Chao Hanya's contract to sell his body, she was delighted and said in disbelief, What do you mean by this? Chapter 94 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 93 Which Little Vixen Insisted on Peeking at the Shower Author. Purple Peony Machine Translation He Lanjin looked at his contract of selling his body and rolled her eyes. Do you think I want you? She lazily poked him with the contract of selling my body. You will like it in the future and you will still want it, said Chao Hanya as he turned the car around. Lu Zifan was so angry that he stomped his foot and kicked the door. His foot was accidentally caught by the door. He screamed in horror at night. He Lanjin held the contract of selling her body and lifted his chin, saying, You. You want to play tricks with me? Hmm. It's not a trick, it's the truth. Xiao Hanya listened and was dissatisfied that she actually went back on her word. He pointed out her incriminating evidence and said, That night when you first lived in Jing Garden, I seem to have been peeked at. I don't know which little fairy insisted on peeking at me while I was bathing. Dot. He Lanjin fell silent. She didn't answer, but her eyes rolled around. With one look, she could tell that she was thinking of a devious idea. Ring. In the quiet car, the ringtone broke the silence. She held her phone and said self-deprecatingly, why is it him again? Who? Xiao Hanya asked. He Lanjin held her phone and said, my dad. As soon as she finished speaking, he took her phone and asked without thinking, hello, who are you? Who are you? Did you ask Ilan Jean to break off the engagement? Do you f asterisk king believe that I will skin you alive? A pair of adulterers, if something happens to the he family, I will find someone to kill you. He Wenchin was so angry that he drank half a bottle of wine and scolded at the top of his voice. Xiao Hanya's hand that was holding the steering wheel tightened slightly. His deep black eyes were filled with anger as he asked coldly, what did you say she was? Others could scold him, but to say he Lanjin was equivalent to asking for death. Don't you understand human language? I said you two are a pair of adulterers. He Wenching scolded disdainfully. Xiao Hanya sneered and said in a low voice, very good. He hung up the phone and saw her gloating. He asked, how is it? Not good, Xiao Hanya said. Seeing how she was gloating, he couldn't help but tease her, saying, I'll help you pick him up later. He Lanjin was happy to hear that. The two of them chatted happily on the road. After returning to Jing Garden, she went back to her room to take a shower. She stretched and climbed onto the bed. Holding her phone, she looked at Nguan's message. Her mood was a little heavy. Who? He Lanjin was lost in her thoughts. When she felt someone approaching, she instinctively fought back, but fell into his arms. Mrs. Chiao, is there something on your mind? Chiao Hanya asked in a low voice, but he respected her privacy. His gaze fell on her face, but he didn't look at her phone screen. He Lanjin saw him appear and kicked him. What are you doing here in the middle of the night? I want to show you something, Chiao Hanya said, handing her a document. He Lanjin took it and said, how did you find out? She was a little surprised. She had previously investigated this matter with Nguan, but she had not been able to find out. However, Chiao Hanya was able to investigate in such detail. It seemed that not only in terms of ability or influence, he was above her. 
He Lan Jin gave him a deep look. After she finished reading, she was silent and asked softly, I have something to ask you. Yes, go ahead. Xiao Hanya was very willing to listen when he heard that she took the initiative to talk to him. He Lan Jin propped herself up. Her voice was very soft, but her logic was clear. Xiao Hanya listened quietly until she finished speaking. He pulled up the blanket and covered her body, saying, Since you have doubts in your heart, why don't you go and do an appraisal? He Lan Jin fell silent. The things he investigated were all related to her many years of difficulties. She was targeted by people, and it was He Wenqing who sold her out. She leaned against the headboard, and he conveniently used a pillow to cushion her back. He looked at her hand grabbing the blanket and said, It's easy to do an appraisal, but it's hard to return the favor of raising me. Even if they're not good, they've raised me for 23 years. Whether it's raising me or using me, can't you tell? Xiao Hanya said in a deep voice. He leaned against her side and continued, He Wenqing probably didn't rely on himself to get to such a position in Jiang City. Chapter 95 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 94 The Wedding Night Author Purple Peony Machine Translation His tolerance for you is obviously based on some kind of transaction, Xiao Hanya said in a low voice. He Lan Jin was silent. A possibility flashed through her mind, but she didn't say it out loud. Got it. Let me think about it, she said in a low voice. After saying that, she lay down and found Xiao Hanya still on her bed. She threw a pillow at him and said, We're done talking. You can go now. Just as she finished speaking, she saw him lying down with his clothes. Xiao Hanya, why are you sleeping on my bed? He Lan Jin said as she kicked him. He was hooked by his body and fell into his arms. Seeing her struggling, the man's voice was hoarse and he panted. He said in a deep voice, Be good. Don't move. Go to sleep. You, you, you. He Lan Jin felt that his body was burning hot, as if something was ready to move. She was hugged by him and did not dare to move. After a long time, she felt that his breathing had calmed down. She asked, Xiao Hanya, why did you choose me? I won't say, Xiao Hanya said in a hoarse voice. He Lan Jin heard him turn over and press him under her. She sat on his waist and pressed his shoulders with both hands. She looked down at him and asked, Are you going to say it or not? As she was on top of him, Xiao Hanya turned over and pressed her under his body. His thin lips fell on her ear and he said in a low voice, Don't move. It will be very dangerous. Dot. He Lan Jin was pressed down by him and could not move. The man's hot breath sprayed on her neck. She inhaled as if she was sucked away. She could not feel herself. She felt him lying down and hugging her tightly. Because it can only be you. I only want you. Xiao Hanya answered her question in a deep voice. He Lan Jin lay there, unable to break free from his embrace. Perhaps because she had been staying up too late recently, she had been exhausted and fell asleep in his embrace. However, it had caused Xiao Hanya to become horny all night long. Burning the body, unable to feel himself. The long night had passed, and just as the horny fire was extinguished, it happened to be early morning. She turned her back to him and rubbed her body a few times. Her perky buttocks were sensitive to his. Hiss. Xiao Hanya's dark eyes were filled with pain. His hands were clenched into fists, and then he tightened his arms and pulled her into his embrace. Stop fooling around. I haven't slept enough. He Lan Jin was still in a daze. She heard a magnetic voice beside her ear calling out, Wife. She unconsciously responded with an MM and changed her position. MM, her cherry lips were sealed by the man. The man's unbridled plundering was as wild as a galloping horse on the prairie. The unbridled attack of his spirit tongue made her sober up a little, and her entire body went numb from his kiss. Chiao. Mm, Chiao, she wanted to speak, 
but her small mouth was forcefully blocked by him. Her body was so uncomfortable that it felt like it was being held by an invisible hand. It was so hot that it felt like she was releasing herself. She had lived for 23 years, but this was the first time she had such a strange feeling. It was as if. Her clothes slid down, revealing her sexy shoulders. Her hair was wrapped around his fingertips, and the two bodies were inseparable. The man's strength seemed to be merging her petite figure into his body before he stopped. Xiao Jin. Xiao Hanya called her name affectionately. It was very pleasant in the morning. He Lan Jin muttered in a low voice. She was somewhat caught off guard. Last night, her brain was squeezed by the door, and she was inexplicably chased by him. For the sake of a peach blossom, she was abducted by him into the Civil Affairs Bureau, and just like that, she was sent into the tiger's mouth. This man who even climbed onto her bed in the middle of the night. Now, while it was attacking her body and preparing to penetrate and merge with her. Xiao Hanya, you, uh. Don't. Get up. He Lan Jin was kissed all over her body, and she was a little dazed. At the critical moment, there was a knock on the door from outside. Han Beicheng called out in a low voice, Master, it's urgent. Chapter 96 All Joes are so. Is it rough? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 96 Chapter 95 All Joes are so. Is it rough? Author Purple Peony Machine Translation He was depressed. He searched the entire scenery garden, but Xiao Hanya was nowhere to be seen. He ventured outside He Lanjin's room and vaguely heard a man's voice. Besides Xiao Hanya, no one dared to provoke He Lanjin. So, Han Beicheng tangled for a while, determined that Xiao Hanya must drill into her room, if still lying together, will not have a big problem. Damn it! Xiao Hanya was interrupted by his knock on the door and interrupted at the critical moment. The atmosphere became a little strange. He propped himself up and said coldly, get lost. This was the first time Han Beicheng had been told to, get lost, by Xiao Hanya. He was stunned for a moment and did not understand what he had done wrong. He continued, Master, it's urgent. Xiao Hanya's handsome face darkened slightly, as if it was a premonition of a storm. He lowered his eyes and looked at Hilan Jin. She was beautiful and charming, like a flower that had just bloomed. He could not bear to tarnish her even a little. Wait for me to come back. Xiao Hanya reached out his hand and pulled on her nightgown. He got off the bed and put on his clothes. He took the blanket and covered her with it. He lowered his head and held her little face. He kissed her affectionately on the forehead before turning around and leaving. Han Beicheng stood outside for a minute. He scratched his head. In the past, Xiao Hanya could appear in two seconds if something happened. Now, a minute had passed, but he still had not come out. Master. Just as he was lost in his thoughts, the door was opened. Xiao Hanya blocked his line of sight and asked in a low voice, What is it, B Noel Dem, it's like this. Han Beicheng lowered his voice, as if he was afraid that a third person would hear him. After explaining everything in detail to Xiao Hanya, Xiao Hanya's handsome face was lifted for a moment of silence before he said to him, Follow me. Yes, Han Beicheng replied. He wanted to take a glance at the bedroom, but when he did, Xiao Hanya closed the door behind him. Seeing Xiao Hanya leave, he Lan Jin lay on the bed and looked at the ceiling for a long time before she said, F asterisk CK, was I possessed just now? I can't believe. She flipped over and got up. Thinking about how the two of them were so passionate just now, she almost pulled out a gun and shot him. She got up to wash her face. After sobering up, she took out her cell phone and made a call. She said, help me check the whereabouts of He Wenching and Tang Jilin over the years, and. After making the call, she looked at the mirror. Her gaze fell on her smooth neck and saw hickeys of different depths. 
she didn't expect that she and Xiao Hanya would be tied together for no reason. She looked at the mirror and thought of something. After washing up, she changed into a turtleneck sweater and a long skirt. When she went downstairs, she saw a familiar figure. Miss He. Shang Wan Ji got up from the sofa and greeted her respectfully, Mr. Chiao asked me to do an identification for you. Is it convenient for you? She didn't expect that Chiao Hanya would ask someone to wait for her in the morning after mentioning it last night. Is the hair okay? She asked. Yes, Shang Wan Ji said. When he saw that she was about to pull out a strand of hair and hand it over, a bodyguard walked in with a serious expression. He handed over a bottle of fresh blood and said to him, This is He Wenching's blood. He Longjin looked at the bottle of fresh blood. She gasped and said, Did you cut his pulse? When the bodyguard heard her question, he quickly turned to her and said in a low voice, Young madam, young master would never do something that would hurt the heavens. Then what about this? She pointed at the bottle in his hand. Hearing her doubt, the bodyguard said to her, He Wenching fell and we passed by to take a bottle. He Lanjin's hand, which was about to pull out her hair, stopped for a moment and handed it over, saying, You can do it. Shang Wanji listened and looked at her carefully. He saw her bend over and pick up the small bottle he placed on the table. She poked it at her fingertip and dripped two drops of blood on it, asking, Is it enough? Chapter 97 Young Master Lu proposes to Little Jean, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 97 Chapter 96 Young Master Lu proposes to Little Jean, her author. Purple Peony Machine Translation, Enough Although Shang Wan Ji knew that she was swift and decisive, he didn't expect her to be so straightforward. He Lan Jin handed the bottle to him, wiped her fingertips with a tissue, and walked out. The bodyguard chased after her with the car keys and handed them to her, saying, Young madam, this is the car that young master prepared for you. You feel wrong driving it for the time being. Young master said that he will buy you a good one later. When she heard him call her young madam, she initially wanted to refute him, but when she remembered that he had indeed lied last night, she did not say anything more. N. She held the car keys. When she saw the new Hummer, she was stunned for a moment before driving away from Scenery Garden. On the way, she received a phone call. An Nguan said anxiously over the phone, Ah Jean, something happened. What happened? She asked in a low voice. An Nguan's voice was very anxious as she said to her, I don't know how Tang Jilin found out about the apartment you just bought, but she came here to cause trouble. She said that if you still didn't come, she would jump off the building and commit suicide. I'll come right away. He Longjin felt her head ache and drove over. Dot just as she arrived at the apartment building, she saw the fire department laying an air cushion below. The scene was sealed off. He Wenching was wrapped in gauze and looked like a pig's head. He seemed to be badly injured. He waited anxiously below. When he saw her figure, he ran up and said, Ah Jean, you're finally here. Daddy waited so long for you. He he. He Lan Jean saw him and knew what was going on. She hung up on him last night and now she invited Tang Jilin to jump off the building and forced her to appear to demand an explanation. Hurry up and come with daddy. Your mother can't see you, and now she wants to commit suicide. I can't stop her, He Wenching said as he dragged He Lan Jin to the elevator and arrived at the 22nd floor. Outside, there were still some people gathered around, obviously watching the show. Ah Jean, mommy dotes on you, loves you, and has never mistreated you. Why are you throwing a tantrum? Now, something big has happened to the He group. All the investors have withdrawn their funds. You're trying to kill our family. Mommy is incompetent and hasn't been able to give you a better life. Now that you've grown up, your wings have hardened. If you don't marry young Master Lu, Mommy can only leave first, Tang Jilin threatened with death. An Nguan saw her figure and immediately walked over, saying, 
your mother kept saying that if you don't marry Lu Zifan, she'll jump off the building. It seems like she's here to force the marriage. I don't know what happened, but something happened to the He Corporation early in the morning. Everyone withdrew their funds, and the He Corporation was emptied, and Nguan said to her in a low voice. After He Lan Jin heard this, the scene from last night surfaced in her mind. After she broke off the engagement with Lu Zifan, Xiao Hanya picked up Jing Garden. On the way, he received a call from He Wenqing and scolded her, adulterer slash adulteress. Xiao Hanya was obviously angry. Could it be that he did it? He Lan Jin's head hurt. Although she didn't know Xiao Hanya's identity. However, those who could live in Jing Garden and drive luxury cars didn't lack money. In this society, even the rich could make things difficult for them. The He family had been messed with. Not far away, Lu Zifan squinted at her and said, He Lan Jin, it seems that I have underestimated you. Last night's incident had caused a great commotion and gave him a severe blow. He didn't believe that she was powerful, but he couldn't not face reality. She was already out of his control and couldn't even conquer her. The more she acted like this, the more uncomfortable he felt. He wanted to conquer and control her. Ah Jean. At this moment, Lu Zifan walked up to her with a rose in his hand and said, I'll give you everything you want. It was my fault in the past. Be good. Stop fooling around, okay? He Lan Jean's body was full of pimples. She looked at the rose in his hand and chuckled softly. She thought it was funny. The famous young master Lu was actually so depressed. Chapter 98 All men love this sell it for a few more dollars while you're still young you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 98 Chapter 97 All men love this sell it for a few more dollars while you're still young author. Purple Peony Machine Translation Seeing that she was straightforward, mature, and capable, she was completely a mature woman. At this moment, Lu Zifan was even more certain of his previous suspicions. There was really something wrong with this He Lan Jin, and she might be the one who knew the He family's secrets. Even now, he still did not know why that person had to obtain the He family's secret. He Wenqing was as stupid as a pig's head. It was impossible for him to have a secret. Perhaps it was because the He family had a backer. However, he had checked, and the He family did not have any openings. Either there was no secret or someone had erased it. If that was the case, then how could the He family's power be so simple? When he thought of this, he suppressed the anger in his heart. He still maintained his handsome smile and said in a low voice, Ah Jean, we are already so familiar with each other. Don't you know me? When He Lan Jin heard this, He Lan Jin leaned lazily to the side and said, Are we close? I don't think so. Besides, when we cancelled our engagement last night, I also gave you a sum of money for your youth. Young Master Lu, you're not going to take the money and deny it, are you? He Lan Jin said meaningfully, making Lu Zifan very uncomfortable. He felt uncomfortable. Now that he was being ridiculed by her, he felt uncomfortable all over, as if he had been beaten up. Young Master Lu, stop for a moment. He Wenqing picked up the phone and quickly ran up to stop her. He pulled He Lan Jin with some excitement and said in a low voice, Just now, the president of Glory World Group called me back. He said there's something to talk about. Ha ha. He Lan Jin suddenly laughed out loud as she listened. She looked at He Wenqing like he was a clown and he was smiling like a dog. She said, Ah Jean, you're happy too, aren't you? Daddy told you that you're beautiful and have a good figure. All men like that. Sell it for a few more dollars while you're young, He Wenqing said she suddenly realized that she had made a mistake and quickly corrected him, Daddy meant that you should marry a rich man while you're young. Daddy wants you to be happy. And Nguan pricked up her ears. Her head was throbbing as she listened, and she felt like stabbing him with a knife. Look, the phone is here. After He Wenqing finished speaking, the phone rang. He immediately picked up the phone and said with a sly smile, name a price. Oh. 
It's like this. My daughter has such a good figure and is so innocent. Why don't you? Dot. He Lanjin fell silent. Seeing In Wan clenching her fists, she remained calm. Dot Lu Zifan stared at He Wenching. His eyes turned vicious. The He Corporation was part of his plan, and he had to take it down. Otherwise, he didn't know how to explain himself to others. Young Master Lu. At this moment, a staff member from the Civil Affairs Bureau came over. He held a tool and said to Lu Zifan, did you invite us here to register with this young lady? Seeing that the staff member from the Civil Affairs Bureau had come over, Lu Zifan strode forward and said in a low voice, Ah Jean, my sincerity is written here. He produced the property notarization and transferred 0.2% of his shares to her. He Lanjin's ice.cold gaze looked at the 0.2%, and it emitted a chill. Young Master Lu, you should take this 0.2% of your shares back to block the toilet. I'm a timid person. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm only afraid of bigamy. Bigamy. Lu Zifan was stunned. He had a bad feeling about this. He Lanjin looked at his anxious look and said in a low voice, I had no choice. At 3.30 in the morning, I was kidnapped by a bandit to the Civil Affairs Bureau. I'm now the wife of a bandit. Lu Zifan's face changed. His handsome face was very constipated. He said, Ah Jean, are you kidding me? She looked at him casually and raised her chin to look at the staff of the Civil Affairs Bureau. She said, Why don't you check and find out? Chapter 99 Young Master Lu, why do you have a scar on your butt? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 99. Chapter 98 Young Master Lu, why do you have a scar on your butt? Author. Purple Peony Machine Translation Lu Zifan looked at this arrogant woman in front of him with mixed feelings. It was as if she had opened up his own continent, and she was actually ruined by someone else he felt indignant in his heart. Ah Jean, that's enough, Lu Zifan said coldly. In the entire Jiang city, apart from Glory World Group, the Lu Corporation could be said to have the power to control the sky. There were many people who wanted to curry favor with him, but she had a disdainful look on her face. This kind of attitude had already hit his self-esteem. Investigate, Lu Zifan said. Seeing this, the staff member silently investigated. He stared at the screen for a few seconds and saw the head of the Civil Affairs Bureau pop up. The head of the Bureau even stared at them as if he wanted to eat them. They were so scared that they smashed their computers. Young Master Lu, it's illegal for you to force a good wife. We can sue you right now, the staff member said coldly. Thinking of the head of the Bureau staring at him, he panicked. He felt that if he didn't clean up the mess, he would be fired later. As a civil servant, he couldn't lose his iron rice bowl because of Lu Zifan. He Lanjin listened and yawned lazily. If there's nothing else, I'll leave. Those who should jump will continue to jump, and those who want to commit suicide will continue to commit suicide. I'm sorry for disturbing you. Dot, and Nguan's mouth twitched, and she gave He Lanjin a thumbs up. Seeing that she was about to leave, Lu Zifan's dark eyes darkened, and a bloodthirsty killing intent instantly appeared. Where's the betrothal gift? He Wenching was furious. He did not expect that after raising her for so many years, she would not be able to sell for a good price. Could it be that she would not be able to get it for nothing? He didn't give me the money, He Lanjin said honestly. Lu Zifan felt that he had been played by her and that he had wasted his time. If she couldn't marry him, it meant that it would be even more difficult for her to swallow the He Corporation in the future. Originally, she wanted to do it openly, but it seemed that she had to do it by hook or by crook. Young Master Lu. I just checked. The staff member who came in just now is a fake. He is not from the true Civil Affairs Bureau, Secretary Yang walked in quickly and said to him in a low voice. Lu Zifan was a little surprised when he heard this. Before he had the time to ask, he heard Tang Jilin's voice. 
Ah Jean, why do you want to trample on yourself like this? You don't want young master Lu's good looks, but you want to marry a bandit. Gangsters will be hacked to death on the road, do you know that? Tang Jilin stepped forward and said. It's true. That bandit is fierce and violent. If he can pick up a butcher's knife, he will definitely kill his way out for me. I like this, he Lanjin said in a low voice. An Wan silently raised her thumb and pretended to play with her phone. Lu Zifan looked at her coldly, but he found that he couldn't see through he Lanjin. She was obviously very stupid, but she seemed to be very capable. At that moment, An Wan suddenly let out a strange laugh. Young Master Lu, why is there a scar on your butt? An Wan said and glanced at Lu Zifan's butt. Lu Zifan thought that his pants were torn, so he quickly looked down. He Wenching and Tang Jilin also stared at his butt, feeling very awkward. Look, you're making friends. You have no manners at all. He Wenching was so angry that he cursed. And Nuan didn't say anything. She handed her phone over and said, and it's a close dot up. A few seconds later, a video appeared. It was a video of Lu Zifan taking off half of his pants, as if he was doing something indescribable. The other party looked like a man and a woman. It was so blurry that it couldn't be seen clearly, and it was even more eye-dot catching. Especially Lu Zifan's butt. It was so high definition that Ma Chienka didn't even hit it. Damn it. Lu Zifan's face instantly turned green. He Lanjin saw it with her sharp eyes. This video was a little familiar, as if it was a passionate video of them in a nightclub. However, this video was taken by her phone in the dark. For this reason, she took out her phone and looked at it. The news was all over the news. Although it was only for a few seconds, it was so explosive that it shocked the entire city. Chapter 100 Suspected that she had a sex trade with Glory World You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 100 Chapter 99 Suspected that she had a sex trade with Glory World Author Purple Peony Machine Translation He Lanjin looked at the angle. It was definitely a photo she had taken earlier. Xiao Hanya had picked up her phone, but he had never returned it to her. He had never even mentioned it, as if there was no such thing. She had sneaked into his room many times to get it back, but she had never found it. Now that this video had been leaked, in just a few seconds, she knew that he must have done it. Damn it, someone is trying to frame me again. Lu Zifan's dark eyes darkened, and a ferocious expression appeared on his face. Looking at that face, it was horrifyingly distorted. He Lanjin stood there, pursing her cherry lips. Her smile was very deep. Young Master Lu, is the person you are facing in this video a man or a woman? It can't be a man and a woman, right? An Wan asked curiously, looking forward to his answer. He Lanjin's sharp eyes saw that this video was very short and had been processed. It overlapped Xiao Yui and Hiroashue's figures. It was because they looked like a man and a woman that people's curiosity was piqued. Lu Zifan, this matter will end here from now on. We are all adults. Don't bring out my parents so easily. These years, they haven't cared about me, and they won't be able to care about me in the future. I hope you remember this and don't let me look down on you, he Lanjin said coldly. Lu Zifan was clearly gay, so why did he have to pretend to be so affectionate? You. Lu Zifan was so angry that his face turned ashen. He ordered Secretary Yang to quickly investigate and wipe out all the videos on the internet. He Lanjin turned to An Wan and said, Get someone to change the infrared lock later, okay? An Wan listened and was amused. An infrared lock could only be entered by someone who was agile and knew how to decode it. Otherwise, if someone really dared to approach and break in, they would be hit and killed on the spot outside the door. The developer of this lock was He Lan Jin. Ah Jin, Ah Jin. He Wenching was chased out and ran after He Lan Jin. 
He said in a low voice, the CEO of Glory World Corporation has ordered that as long as you make a trip there, you will solve the problem for us. Otherwise, the He Corporation can only wait for death. I'm your father. Do you want to watch me die from being hit by someone? He Wenching asked. He Lanjin listened and stopped in her tracks. He was glad that she had changed her mind. I can go to Glory World, but the prerequisite is that you give me the company now, he Lanjin asked seriously. When he Wenching heard this, his face instantly turned cold. He pointed at her and said, I'm not dead yet, and you want to scheme against my business. He Lanjin, what did you learn in the military academy? Then you can pretend that I didn't say anything, she said and left with an Nguan. After Lu Zifan finished the call, he saw He Lanjin leave. Is Glory World Group sure that they won't negotiate with us? Lu Zifan asked coldly. Secretary Yang secretly wiped his cold sweat he stood there and said respectfully, Young Master Lu, we haven't seen Glory World's boss. We can't find his identity, so we can't get a hold of him. Now that your scandal has been exposed, I think the Lu family has been appearing frequently recently. Glory World is also stubborn, so I'm afraid they are coming for us. Glory World. Very good. Lu Zifan's dark eyes revealed a sinister look. He held his phone and narrowed his eyes, saying, Jiang City is my Lu family's territory. He wants to force me to death. Then my Lu family will accompany him to the end. Young Master Lu, what should we do now? Secretary Yang asked for instructions. He whispered to Secretary Yang. After hearing this, Secretary Yang asked in disbelief, You suspect that Miss He has a physical transaction with Glory World. Go and suppress the online scandal. Also, find out WHO's behind this. You must find out who he is. Lu Zifan left after saying that. He felt that this matter was too strange. He had to start with Ilan Jean. If necessary, he had to cripple her and force the He family out. When he went downstairs, he was engrossed in his thoughts. He did not see a motorcycle crashing into him. Lu Zifan felt a chill down his spine. D asterisk M in it. Lu Zifan was knocked away by the motorcycle he felt a chill down his spine. He lowered his head to look. Someone had sprayed a mushroom on his pants with green paint. P.S. Mushrooms are usually quite short.